What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Phillies Hot Stuff videocast, and today will be the 13th weekly update here on the videocast as we're going to be talking about Phillies news and all-around baseball news. Now, guys, before we get into this video, I would like to ask you, if you are not subscribed, please go and subscribe right now. I do daily game recaps during regular season, news updates, and much more all on this channel. So it would really be appreciated if you went down there and clicked that subscribe button. So today on the video cast, we're going to be doing some uh, staff predictions uh, for the offensive players. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do any for the uh, pitchers yet, the like starting pitchers. I won't have to do five, so if I do do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so let's just dive right into it. So the first player I want to do here, and I think this is obviously the, you know, the guy I believe had the best offensive season for the Phillies, uh, and I think the best season for the Phillies overall, is right fielder Bryce Harper. Bryce had a good 2019. Uh, he had a good 2019. I think he's going to do better in 2020. Uh, probably didn't live. I don't think he lived up to his expectations in 2019. Uh, he had a good year, but it wasn't as we expected. Um, I expected the average to be a little bit higher. I think the home runs is, you know, pretty much as I expected. He kind of picked it up in the second half, uh, but uh, he underperformed a little bit. But he had, a, he still. This just shows what a good player he is. He underperformed, but he's still able to put up such good numbers. Um, so let's uh, go over my projected stats for Bryce Harper in 2020. Uh, batting average 277, home runs 39, RBIs 120, 109 walks, uh, 396 uh, on base percentage, a 896 OPS, and a 5.1 WAR. Um, now you know a few people. Obviously, every time you get comments, you know people you know disagreeing a little bit. And you know one guy you know commented said, you know I think the batting average will be a bit lower and the OPS will be a little bit higher. I could see that. I could see. I agree with that guy. You know. You know, I think he's going to have a 277 average, but I, I could also see that as well. Um, so um, I think he's just going to miss 40 home runs. But I think there's a possibility. I think there's a good possibility he will hit over 40. You know, 40, 41, uh, around that range. 39, 40, 41. The RBIs, I think, are going to be great. Uh, the walks, I think, are going to be a little bit higher than last year. Last year he had 99. I think he's going to get 10 more this year. Uh, I like the OBP, 396. I mean, these are like these are really, really good numbers. I mean, these are MVP numbers. I mean, really. I mean, like this is this is great. I mean, this is this is all. 39 home runs, 120 RBIs. I mean, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, the only thing that maybe would keep me from saying like definite MVP numbers is the 20, 277 average. Uh, I mean, if he can get that up, maybe in the 280s, 290s, then we're talking MVP. But a 270 average, 277 average, you usually don't see many. Players win the MVP with a 2.77 batting average, but nevertheless, this would be a great season out of Bryce Harper. I think this is what he. I think this is what he's going to do. I think he's going to have a fantastic season, uh, and there's no bias here. I just see a lot of potential in it. I think some people are kind of uh, losing sight about what this man can do. I think some people are overreacting, saying, "Oh, he had such a terrible." I mean, do you think he had a terrible year last year? You need to click off this video because that is ridiculous. He had a very good year last year, and uh, I can't wait to see what he does in 2020. Now, moving on here, we got the best catcher in baseball, Mr. JT Realmuto. Um, he is he's the best catcher in baseball. There's no denying it. Uh, don't comment, Grandall. I mean, that, that's stupid. Stop wasting my time. Uh, I think, I think Realmuto is going to have a really, really good season. I think he's going to hit 283 with 32 home runs, 86 RBIs, uh, 44 walks, uh, 333 on base percentage, and 828 OPS. And I'm having a 5.9 war. Uh, he had a 5.7 WAR in 2019. I think he can get it up to close to six. Uh, some people don't think that he's a, a six-win player. It's hard for a catcher to be a six-win player, but he provides such good defense and offense as well. So, not you don't really see that many in a lot of catchers. Some you know catchers have great defense, but they're they hit like 200 at the plate. Remuto is able to have a great offensive production, but he has great defense on top of that. So that's how I think he could possibly pull that off. I mean, he had a 5.7 WAR. It's only 0.2 off. So I don't think that that's a huge, you know, drag here. I think he could definitely make that happen. So I'm really not uh, thinking that that's really unrealistic for him. Uh, you know, some people disagree. I mean, some people are always going to disagree. But um, I think that he could definitely pull that off. I really do. And, uh, you know, some people that may disagree do bring up a valid point. And it is, you know, kind of, for that kind of player, it's hard to get that uh, kind of war. But um, he's just a different type of catcher. You don't really see many catchers like him. You really don't. I mean, like, offensively and defensively. Best catcher in baseball. No, not without a doubt. And the people that say ground all need to click off this video because that is ridiculous. Uh, so I think we're going to see another great season from Remuto. He's in a contract year. 
I think he's going to do great. So the next man up is first baseman Reese Hoskins. Now, Reese, 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 Reese. Reese had a rough 2019 where he hit uh, a, a whopping 226 uh, with 29 home runs, 85 RBIs. Uh, he did manage to have a 364 on base percentage, uh, 819 OPS. Not great. Uh, numbers for Reese Hoskins. He was able to get on base a lot. Watch way too many pitches go by. And I can't tell you how many. I've went on here all the time after a game last year. How many times did I say, Hoskins, watching pitches right down the middle of the plate. He did it all the time. He did it all the time. We better see a different Reese Hoskins here in 2020. I, I'm telling you. Um, and I think he will do a little bit better. I do. I do think he will do a little bit better. Here's my projected stats for Hoskins. A 258 batting average, 33 home runs, 91 RBIs, 108 walks, a 373 on base percentage, an 863 OP, OPS, and a 3.1 war. I think that's the best Hoskins can do. I don't think he's a guy who could really hit a, a much above 260. Yeah, maybe he could hit around 261, 262, 63. He's not a guy who could really hit in the 270s or 280s. I mean, maybe eventually. I mean, we saw him do it in the first half of last year, like through May. I mean, almost through June, he was hitting like above 270. And he just totally just fell off around June. Uh, it was awful. It was one of the worst things I think I've ever seen. The second half was awful. I can't even tell you how awful. I don't even want to say how bad it was. Like it, 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 this would be an embarrassment for him. I'm not even going to tell you how bad it was because it was bad. So I'm not even going to say it. But I'll tell you what. We better see a different Hoskins here because this is a diff- this is a big year for him. I tell you what. Because I tell you what. If he doesn't, you know, perform up to the expectation, he's gone. I mean, like, really, there's no messing around here. I mean, we're, we're trying to win. Um, and I tell you what, I'm, you know, I'm really hoping that he could, you know, pull it off. I really can because I tell you what, you know, there's expectation. He's not living up to expectation, so he better pick it up. Our next player we're going to be doing is shortstop D.D. Gregorius. Um, obviously missed a lot of 2019 due to Tommy, Tommy John surgery, recovering from Tommy John surgery. Did not have the greatest of seasons uh, due to health. Uh, with the Yankees, but uh, he's coming over here, uh, one-year deal. I think he's going to hit 260, 25 home runs, 76 RBIs, 46 walks, uh, 332 on base percentage, 818 OPS, and a four war. He's hit around 25 home runs most of the time. He's with the Yankees, maybe top like maybe 27 uh, a few times. But I mean, the porch at Yankee Seams was very, very short. You know, the porch in Philadelphia, also very short. So I think he's going to be able to take advantage of that porch in right field here as well. I mean, just like he did at Yankee Stadium. Uh, so I see him hitting around 25 or months. Would it surprise me to see him hit 26, 27, even 28? No. You know, it's just a projection, right? Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him hit a few more home runs. Um, but uh, I'm saying 25. Uh, the 260 average, I think, is adequate. Uh, 76 RBIs. Um, you know, he's not an on-base machine. Uh, and, and no means he's an on-base machine. But uh, he's not a bad player. Uh, so that's my projected stats for Didi Gregorius in 2020. Next man up is second baseman Gene Segura. Um, and Segura, he had a good 2019, but it wasn't the expectation. He could have done a lot better. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, he was he was kind of lazy. He still managed to hit her in around the 280s, but I'll tell you what, he could have, I mean, he's above a three. He's a 300 hitter. He is he has the capability of hitting 300 every year, which isn't easy. But he didn't live up to the expectation. I expected him to do much, much better. He was lazy all, a lot, and he didn't really, uh, you know, do the job that I thought he could do. Uh, disappointment. Uh, I think we're going to see a different Gene Segura here in 2020, and I, I really hope we do. And this man is very, very important for us. I mean, he's a, he's a hit machine, right? Um, so that's what we heard all last year. So uh, Gene the hit machine. So I definitely think he's going to be able to uh, get a lot of hits this year, and, uh, you know, he's not the kind of guy who, you know, gets on base a lot with walks, and, you know, he's not he's not an on-base machine um, by any means. He's, he, you know, obviously moving back to second, moving over to second base, I think is good for him. Uh, obviously, Gregorius is now at short, so uh, I think that might help him a little bit. Uh, not a great shortstop, not a great defender by any means, um, you know, so I'm glad he's at second base now, um, but uh, Segura, I mean, he's, you know, you know, there's a lot of allegations out there about him, you know, with the Mariners, with some clubhouse issues. So, I mean, there's a little bit of, you know, some you know, uncertainty, but I, I think he'll be able to be good this year. I think he's going to be 296 average, 13 home runs, 62 RBIs, 33 walks, 325 on base percentage, and a 748 OPS and a 2.7 war. Uh, I think he's going to just miss, just miss 300, but you know what? 296 ain't far from 300. So, would it surprise me to see him hit 300? No. 
Not at all. I think he's going to hit around the upper 290s. I think 13 home runs is the best he could do. So uh, maybe 13, 14, 62 RBIs. Not bad. Uh, not bad at all. The next man up is uh, left fielder Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, Andrew McCutcheon just had a devastating ACL tear last year, which you know put him out the rest of the season. I was talking about before about how uh, Gene Segura was a lazy player. Well, in San Diego, uh, he uh, hit a pop-up to Ian Kinsler. Uh, the Ian Kinsler made a heads-up play because he noticed that Segura wasn't uh, hustling. They let the ball drop in front of him and, and say no more. Uh, that was the end of that. Uh, that was a total disaster. McCutcheon was just caught in between of it, and uh, that was it for him. So uh, I definitely think we're going to be seeing a uh, good Andrew McCutcheon here in 2020. Uh, I think he's going to have a really good year. I think he's really just motivated to get out there and play. Uh, I think he's upset, obviously. Anybody would be upset. I mean, if you're out for the rest of the year, that's frustrating. Uh, so I definitely think we're going to be seeing a different Andrew McCutcheon here. Um, I mean, he's a great player. He really is. I, I really, really like him a lot, and I think he's a great person. So I think he's going to hit 257, 26 home runs, 67 RBIs because he is a leadoff hitter, 96, 96 walks, uh, 374 on base percentage, a 837 on OPS, and a 2.1 war. Um, their RBIs, as I said, are a little low because he is a leadoff hitter. Uh, he's an on-base machine. I mean, he was an all. I mean, he's on track to be an all-star. I mean, he was great. I mean, he's great. 257 average. What do you expect? He's, he hasn't really hit above 250 the past few years. So I definitely think he's going to hit you know around 257. That's my bet. That's my guess. Which is still very good because you know in the modern day, you know people care more about you know the on-base and everything. So, you know, batting average isn't as important as it used to be. Next up on the list is third baseman Scott Kingery. He had a good 2019, uh, kind of fell off towards the end, got a little tired. Um, you know, his month of June was fantastic. Month of July was pretty good. Kind of fell off after the All-Star break. Uh, not a ton, but he, I mean, he, his month of, you know, August and September were not very good. Um, but uh, kind of had, he was injured he, he was injured at the beginning, you know, had some issues. Uh, um, but I, I think he's, I think he had a solid year last year. I think he's, this is what I think he's going to do this year. I think I mean, he's going to have a 271 average, 21 home runs, 68 RBIs, 41 walks, a 802 on base percentage, a 796 OPS, and a 2.9 WAR. I think that's what uh, Scott's going to do for the Phillies this year. That's a good year. I'd be imp I'd be satisfied with that. I mean, you know, I think he's, you know, obviously going to be a third base. I will get to this in a little bit. But Girardi, you know, wants him to play. Uh, you know, I'll just talk about it now. Girardi wants Kingery to play one position in uh, 2020, which I think is great because you know what? He's moving around way too much. I mean, yeah, when you first call him, you you listen to the skipper. You know, hey skip, you know, you want me to. You know, move around the diamond. Yeah, sure. But once you get in, like your third, fourth year, I said this all the time, you kind of need to get settled in one position. You can't keep moving around all the time. So I think it's a good decision that, you know, he is, uh, you know, going to play one position. I think that's a really, really good uh, decision. I talked about that last week, too. So I think this is what Kinger is going to do. I think he's going to have a good year. Uh, and this isn't all star numbers, but it's, uh, you know, he's, I think he's going to improve. Now, the final player on this list is center fielder Adam Hazley. Um, Hazley got called up, uh, in San Diego, I believe. I think that was when he got his first hit. Uh, I think it was, I think he won the game for us then, I think. I can't really remember. Uh, I think that's when the, that was, yeah. I think that was, yeah, the series in San Diego when, uh, McCutcheon went down and Jay Bruce had all those home runs. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's when he came up. But, yeah, he had a good year. You know, he hit around five home runs. I think he hit like 266, something like that. Uh, not a bad year by any means. Uh, he had a good year. Uh, was hurt a little bit. Missed some time in like around June. Uh, you know, came back, uh, you know, towards the later end of the year. Um, I mean, you know, he, he was he was good. I mean, I like Adam Hazley a lot. I believe he hit his first big league home run against the Dodgers in July. Uh, I remember that was, I think it was the YouTube game. Yeah, YouTube game. Um, so, I like Hazley. I like I like him a lot. He's a young kid. I love to see this guy succeed. You know, I, I really really like this kid a lot. And uh, this is what I think he's gonna do. I think he's gonna hit 262, 12 home runs, 43 RBIs, 31 walks, a 325 on base percentage, a 728 OPS, and a one WAR. Uh, now I understand the you know the WAR is a little low. Uh, he's a great defender. Not to mention, I mean, he's a great defender. Um, you know, I I wouldn't surprise me to see him have a little bit of a higher WAR. Uh, that's just my that's just my opinion. If I had to go back and change that, I would. I think it's going to be a little bit higher than a one. Uh, so I've had to go back and change that, I would, because, you know, his defense is just terrific. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was really busy this week. I had midterms at my school, which is just terrible. 
uh, that's it's horrible. I don't think people realize how terrible that is. So, yeah, halfway through the school year, guys, I can't believe it. I remember I came on here like just like the day before the first day of school, and I was talking to you about how you know it's going to be a long year, and here I am halfway through my school year. So, 50% of the way through, and the last half of the year is you know it's not easy, but it's baseball comes back. You got springtime. You know things start coming back. It's February 1st. Happy February 1st, everyone. I understand I'm doing this video on a Saturday. Super Bowl's tomorrow. I'm not going to get any views if I do it tomorrow, so I'm doing it today. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Now, guys, before I go, though, I have to say this. Uh, the Phillies did make a little move yesterday. They claimed right-handed pitcher Reggie McLean off waivers from the Seattle Mariners. And they also designated uh, right-handed pitcher Trevor Kelly for assignment to make room for McLean on the 40-man roster. So, guys, that is it for the weekly update here. It's a little long. I went over player predictions, so it takes a little while. So, thank you all so much for watching this video. Please smash a like on this video. I'm about to get 1,000 followers on Phillies Hot Stove Instagram. Go give it a follow, at Phillies Hot Stove. Link in the description below. Harper Fanatics, link in the description below. Please go follow that as well. Subscribe. Again, please subscribe if you have not yet. Check out the Phillies Fancast podcast as well. Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm Luke, and I will talk to you all later. See you guys.